Hello and welcome back to our study of Penine Halacha, the teachings of Rebbe Yezer Malamed Shlita. I hope everyone had an enjoyable Shabbos, and for those in the United States, enjoyed a pleasurable July 4th weekend, a long holiday weekend. Everyone was off work through Monday, so here we are beginning the work week on Tuesday. The next chapter that we have is Hamechubadim Vahamavarachim Mechupa, the honors and those who are honored at the chuppah. Orech ha-chuppah hu zeshim avarech ha-shtei brachas ha-kedushin, al ha-yayin v'al ha-erosun k'fishu l'ma no'el. So first, first part is that we said is the Masada Kedushin, is the one who makes the first two blessings at the Kedushin, and that's the bracha of Borei Priyagafen, and the bracha of Erosun, which we had discussed in detail a couple of sessions ago. L'achar mikein, yesh kibud chashiv hu kriya saksuba. After that, we have another honor that is given. It's a very chashiv. It's an important honor. It's called reading the ketubah. If you have a rabbi who is deserving of the honor, then you should honor him with reading the ketubah of Imlo. And if he can't, then the person who is the Masada Kedushin, that rabbi, should read the ketubah. Some people read only sort of the highlights of the Ksuba. Our Ashkenazi Ksubas are not that long-winded, whereas some of the, in the Sephardic community are a little bit longer. So if there have a longer version, some will only read sort of the highlights because we don't want to be matriach. We don't want to burden the people that are sitting at the wedding by listening to this whole Megillah going on and on in Aramaic. Some will read it actually with a Hebrew translation. So that the bride and the groom and everyone around will understand exactly what the ksuba is about. However, we follow this practice, which is to read it in its original Aramaic. And this is the custom that has been done and used for 2,000 years. Also, when we talked up early about setting up the ketubah, when the bride and the groom, and when the kinyanim are made, that's when they understand the terms of the chuppah, of the ketubah, so there's no need to reiterate that at the time of the chuppah. Of course, we mentioned last time that one of the things that happens also during the kedushin, and we're talking about honors here that you give out for reading something that a speaking part, but the edim, which of course is the most important part of the chuppah, they will be up at the chuppah as well when the ring is presented and the Hariyat Mekodeshes is recited. So we said first, Birchas Eresen, reading of the Ksuba, Lachemikan Mevarachan and Sheva Brachas Anasuan. Then we have the seven nuptial blessings, the Sheva Brachas as we call them. Kasher Mechalkan Esa Brachas Lenech Badim Shonim, Matsminin the Habracha Rishon Al Shneya, Kach Sheva Pol Efshel the Chabe Besheva Brachas Shisha Mechubadim. When we divide it up into amongst the different honorees, so some have the custom that they attach the first two blessings, so the Bore Priyagafen and the second of the Sheva Bracha, so therefore you would actually have six honorees. There are different customs among this as well. Some people will even divide the first two. Nachon lomar es ha-brachas b'kol ram, k'dei she'achasen v'akalav od shmona g'varim yuchu l'shomam gam below haram kol. One should make sure that the Sheva Brachas are recited out loud, and certainly so that enough, you have at least a minion of people, certainly the bride and the groom, but a minion of men that will listen even without the microphone. But you have questions about whether or not hearing a bracha on a microphone, one is yotze with a minion, etc., etc., but we say the sheva brachas out loud. Then he has a question. She'ela, esmi roi l'chabed b'sheva ha-brach she'bechupa, him rabanim o krovei mishpacha. So if you want to give out honors at the wedding, to whom is it more important to dole out these honors? to, let's say, a series of rabbis that you may have in attendance, or to relatives of the bride and groom. Teshuvah, here is his answer. Be'avar, no'agu b'makomos rabim sh'rav ha'makom ha'im esadras ha'kedushin b'varchan esperech ha'erisin. In the past days, many places had the custom that the rabbi of the city, or the rabbi of that place where they were, he would be the Masada kedushin, he would say the first two blessings on erisin. And the next important rabbi, let's say you could say what well, one from each side, the boy's rabbi, the girl's rabbi, if they're from different places, so or another chash of rabbi would say the seven blessings. There is a halachic approach to this, 
That's because each of the seven blessings are connected one to the other, especially those that don't begin. When we say, for instance, they don't start with Baruch Atah Hashem, so they're actually connected to the previous blessing. Therefore, it's better to have them all recited in continuity without interrupting between different people reciting them. And some also have the custom, they wanted the brachas sung nicely, that they will have the chazan, the cantor, the singer, whoever it might be, that he would recite all of these seven blessings. In later generations, he wanted to honor even more rabbis with the recitation of these blessings. So therefore they would give this out to six different rabbis. Again, the first two to one, and then the rest to five other rabbis. And even though we don't have that continuity, as we said, between those brachas which are connected or interconnected, but nevertheless, there's something called kavod ha-Torah. You're honoring the Torah by giving this great rabbis this honor. This, this change perhaps could have developed when people started inviting more and more people to weddings, and more and more people means more and more rabbis. And since they would honor all the rabbis with blessings, so the easiest way to give out honors, you don't want to insult anyone, they wanted to give all the honors to the rabbis and show honor to the rabbis, so they would divide up the Sheva Brachos. So now once we have the custom starts that we would divide up the seven blessings amongst different people, first starting with different rabbis, so even in an instance where you don't have six other rabbis there. They would break up the brachas, and they would give it, let's say, to grandparents, elder statesmen in the family. You have uncles, great-uncles, grandparents, great-grandparents, what have you. He says, so much so that some people are actually expecting it, that if certain relatives, if they don't get an honor at the chuppah, then they might be disappointed or it might cause some sort of strife. But Rav Malamed says that if there are rabbis present, it's preferable to honor the rabbis to recite the blessings. Because that's how the brachas were divided originally, was to give it to the rabbis. However, if this is going to cause a problem, the last thing we want to have at a chuppah is any sort of problem. So we'll just spell it out like this. If you have the option, family or rabbis, Malamed says you should give the brachas to rabbis. If it's going to cause a problem, people will be insulted. Trust me, the rabbis don't want to be part of anything that causes strife, anything that causes any sort of difficulty or challenges, especially at the wedding ceremony. So therefore, give it to the family members. But again, this is what the Masada Kedushin does. We work these things out well in advance. We make sure we know who's coming. We understand sensitivities. And we want to make the simcha, the wedding, the chuppah, as festive as possible. So again, I thank you, everyone, for listening today. As we have a shorter week than usual, but... We are here nonetheless, studying the laws of Penine Halacha, the customs of a Jewish wedding. We'll see you here next time. God willing. Have a great day.